Howdy y'all. You got the Bulldog on the channel. Got this vehicle here. Had it in last weekend. Gonna do strut mounts. I drove it and it had a, a noise when you sit still, turn the wheel back and forth, pop, 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 pop. That was the uh, strut bearing locking up and it wouldn't let the springs rotate when you turn the front wheels. So it popped and chunk and all that kind of stuff. She said it had a noise when you drive down the road. I drove it, didn't hear it. Well, the mount might be bad enough that it makes a noise going down the road. And I had checked this thing about six months ago, looking for the same noise, and I couldn't find it then either. You know, you know it have one, has one, but you just can't recreate it. Well, it's going to have to get worse. Well, it did. Uh, I drove it around and you know, hit all the potholes that I could and never really heard the noise. I mean, that very little bit, uh, not enough to, to really know what it is. Well, I went ahead and ordered the strut bearings and got ready to put them on last weekend. And I put it up in the air because they had asked, well, do we want to do the struts when we do that? Well, that's a lot of expense. It's a big price difference. If it was, you know, the strut, we would get what's called a quick strut, which is the whole smash, you know, the spring and strut and bearing and all of it comes in one piece. Well, I get it up in the air. And that's oil leaking out the strut. So I had to eat a little crow, call the customer. Yeah, the struts are bad. Here's the other one. You see, it's got oil coming out from under it. See, whenever the car is on the ground, this is all collapsed and it's got a tire over it. You can't see it. So, it's just difficult to price things, you know, without knowing the future. But what I really wanted to show y'all is, you know, one of these uh, procedural deals that you just don't quite understand unless you do it quite a bit. Step one in working on the front suspension of this van. First thing you do, you take off the windshield wipers. Yeah, the video didn't freeze. I was just waiting for that to sink in. Take off the windshield wipers so that you can take off the cowl that covers up the strut mounts. That's why things just kind of steamroll. You know, you'll think, oh my gosh, that's... I know things have gone up, but... That's twice as much as I paid for the same job just five years ago. Well, you know, most of the stuff five years ago, or this is a five-year-old van, so ten years ago, you know, working on a five-year-old at that time, but uh, they would have them out there where you get to it. You didn't have to take anything loose. But, you know, this is called progress, you know, change everything. Stuff it back in there so you can't see it. Whenever you're at the dealership and you pick the hood up, you're not looking for things like that. You're, you know, wanting to know things like uh, fuel mileage and estimated cost of ownership. Well, it's brand new. It's never been serviced. Uh, maybe it's a brand new model. They don't know what it costs. They just kind of guess. And they're in the business of selling the vehicle, so they're not in the business of telling you exactly how much it's going to cost to own. Uh, I've seen a lot of them that where they'll change a bunch of stuff on it and then use the same service records of that model over the past, you know, 10 years to estimate their maintenance cost, cost of ownership. There's just way... Too many things and they just change things constantly they don't make it better they just change it they got to change it you, you if they didn't change it why would you buy a new one you know 
and some of this stuff they do this on purpose I know that's sounds a little paranoid for somebody in my position but I've seen it too many times where they made a change to the vehicle and made the repair more difficult where it had absolutely no benefit at any point in the manufacturing process or in the operation of the vehicle. The only result of the change they made was to make repairs harder. That's part of the reason why they keep changing the fasteners that hold everything together. You know, it used to be you had standard nuts and bolts. That's it. Well, then they decided, well, we need to be more in line with uh, foreign companies, and they started with the metric bolts. That's fine. You know, it's still just a six-sided bolt. Well, no, some of them are 12-sided. Uh, well, no, that's not good enough. we got to have torques you know you had Phillips head screws or flat head screws and all well, now you gotta have Torx head screws and then Torx head bolts and then inverted Torx head bolts and then uh, well these Torx are your you know the manufacturers uh, are making a lot of tools you know trying to keep up with it so now we're not even gonna have a six point Torx we're gonna have a five point Torx it looks identical but nothing fits it took me five, six years to get those tools. Uh, inverted torques, which means it we a bolt with a Torx head. It's sticking out, so you have a, a Torx socket to go over top of it. Then they started something called spline drive. You know it, that's uh, a twelve-point spline on your bolt, both internal and external. So you had to have both bits and sockets. And we're not talking about just, you know, little screws. We're talking about large bolts that are spline drive. Uh, and they have 12 points, yes. But the Germans have their own spline drive. The Asians have their own spline drive. There's triple square, and then there's double hex. They're different. You might not tell when you look at it or try to put it in there, but, and I don't really see the difference unless you put it in there and it doesn't feel quite tight. And you hope that it's, you know, not, you know, cranked down by a guy named Armstrong. Because if you gotta try to get that loose, it's... If you strip that thing out, you're going to have a bad day. So, I just wanted to show you, since this was handy here, that uh, this is part of the reason why the cost of repairing vehicles is going up. Because they add steps to the job that is not needed. Well, we'll talk to you all later. Like, comment, subscribe, share it. Uh, let's get some exposure out there. Not, not that kind of exposure. Just, just you know, media. Okay.